got our flannels on and I've got me Jap safeties. So it must be time for another backyard mechanic. So we're back in the shed today with Taylor's GQ Patrol. Got a few flies swimming around, but that's okay, Australia. Um, not too long ago now, we did the gold fields for a week. It was a pretty big trip, and we've just come back from up north at Durian. So it's about time to do a post-trip inspection on Taylor's patrol. So we're gonna start off underneath and show you what to go through. So what Taylor's doing here, he's uh, having a bit of a shuffle around all the bushings, checking any loose nuts and bolts, that sort of thing. And we haven't washed underneath here yet. And the reason for that is because the light coating of dirt that's under here, if there is anything loose, loose nuts or bolts, it's gonna leave a bit of a scrape where the part has jiggled around and make it a little bit easier to identify. What I think Taylor's probably gonna have trouble with now is it's kind of dark under here. So I might go get a light and we'll follow him around and see if we can find anything worth fixing up under here. When it's dusty, if there's any sort of leak, it's going to show up and it's going to be obvious as dog's balls. Um, as you can see here, even if you see my gearbox, I don't know if you can see it with this light. Yeah, it's all you can dusty see. and... I'm going to hold it up there. Yep, you can see the sheen coming off it. Yeah, see the sheen? It's going to be a darker colour than the dirt than, say, up here or down there where it's just dusty. It's essentially going to turn to mud. Yep. And that's a pretty obvious telltale sign you got work to do. Okay, so we've gone under there. We checked for any loose bolts. There's no visible signs of anything. Um, there is a few leaks though from the diff, the gearbox, and what else was there? Transfer case. Transfer. So now is the part we'll take it outside and we'll give it a wash, degrease under there and everything before we go back under and give everything a good jiggle with that uh, big screwdriver we've got. And that'll also wash away the big mist of oil leaks. And as it leaks over the next couple of days, we can hop under there and have a look, maybe be able to pinpoint where the leaks might directly be coming from. At the moment, it's just all over everything. What are you doing there, Alex? Get rid of all this scunge. Put the degreaser in the engine bay. Some people don't like degreasing the engine bay. Taylor and I do. Because it looks clean. I do like to degrease things. Tell you what, I could really go with degreasing my liver. Yeah. With a bush chuck right now. It's funny you mention that, Alex. There's a couple of cold ones in the back. Ooh. Are they Kimberly cool? Nah, no, they're they're Perth cool. Ooh. While we washed it, we've walked around and we've had a bit of a look at all the body. The spotlights are nice and tight, the aerial's there. But, well, I would say no lights are cracked, but this light is cracked. The so shark's that, still there. Yeah, the shark's still there, despite the previous set of spotties being stolen. They took all this off, stole the spotties, reattached the shark for him. Top blokes. Now that we've gone around the body, just going to do a quick check of the lights. And then we're going back underneath to give everything a jiggle and a tighten and we'll show you some other points to look out for while you're under there. Turn it on. Just hit the brakes too. We can actually see things now that we've washed it. And Taylor's just got his lever bar. Poking holes in what is incredibly buggered. The muffler on the exhaust is very, very worn and old. You can see the rust holes starting to form. Ooh. And where it's been hit along one of the horn track ruts that I was enjoying so much. Yep. Oh, so no. that's a sway bar link bush. 
And that looks pretty savage. Point that out for us, Taylor. Right there, Noathane bushes. Chewed right out, or... You can see, without any pressure whatsoever, that's coming apart. This is the front drive shaft, down the front diff. So there's little grease nipples in here, right where my finger is. I greased these before I went away, so they shouldn't need greasing again. But just to show you where they are, you put grease gun in there, clip it on, just a couple of pumps, it should be good. Now something else I was going to mention is if you've had a rough trip and you've had a few knocks under here, um, you might want to, after you've washed it, just go over and hit those places with a can of matte black paint or something, just to stop any rust developing too far. That's something I like to do. Gee, a bit tight, lad. A little bit. But... I'd rather it not be loose. Yep. So you put that aside, keep that thread out of the dirt as much as possible. Good idea. Wipe your fingers on your bum. Good idea. Get your little one. Stick it in there. Oh no, that's bad. Oh, it's a bit low, is it? I can't feel any oil on that. Oh no. It's clean though. It's clean, okay. So that's what you want your oil to look, at, look like. You don't want it to be brown and murky. So you want to do that for... Front diff. Front diff, yep. Back diff. Transfer case and gearbox. And you want it, you want your front diff to be so full that it's leaking out like that. Yeah, right on those just on threads. Just right to the top, just of that bolt hole. <laughs> <laughs> you also want to go through and check all the lines like this, that's a soft brake line. Check all the hard brake lines, make sure nothing's been scrubbed through. Check all the wires, just run your eyes over things. That's a diff breather, man. Diff breather, make sure those are connected, not hanging off, because it can happen if a stick shoots up there. Make sure they're not cracked. Yep. Yeah. Check things like boots. That's that, that boot around the steering damper there. If you've got a live axle vehicle, you'd be looking up in this sort of area at uh, CV boots, making sure they're not torn. This is patrol, so you don't have any of that sort of thing. So as soon as a CV boot tears, it gets full of muck, and your CVs will not last long. Check all this mud here. Yeah, make sure there's plenty of mud around that point there. Yeah. While we've got the front axle off the ground, we're gonna have a look at the front wheel bearings. Probably wanna do this for the back as well. All we're gonna do is give it a spin, listen for any horrible grinding sounds. There's a bit of a noise there, but I'd say that's probably just the brake pad touching the brake a little. Now, there's two other points to check here. The wheel bearing, to check the wheel bearing play. Top and bottom. Pull it in and out, that's perfect. There's no play there. Then if you put your hands here and here, jiggle it that way, you can feel for play in the steering and it's all perfect, Taylor. Good news. Something is right with your car. Fantastic. There's yes. got to be something. Also, got wheel weights there. Have a look at them, see if it's obvious that one of them's gone missing, because that does happen and then everything goes out of balance. And just go around the tyre like this and look for any wear. Also, if it's been a, a pretty long trip, your back tyres are likely to have copped more wear than the front. Might be time for a rotation. So, given missing wheel weights perhaps, needs a rotation, may as well get a wheel alignment, take it to a tyre shop and you get that done for a oh, hundred bucks. Worth it for your tyre longevity and comfort. What are you doing up there, mate? Well, thought it was better check all the windows and windscreen and just for cracks, chips, giant massive bugs that you didn't get to see. Oh yeah. Um, found a couple of them, but they're, they're already gone. I didn't cop any road, uh, rogue rocks or anything, so my windscreen's pretty good. While I'm up here, I'll check the snorkel, make sure that's still solid on there. Roof rack. Yep. Still Pretty there. solid. Awning, that's not moving. Just go all the way along. Right to the end. Nothing's moving. Just quickly run your hands over the bolts. My bolt-ons look pretty good. If you've got anything else on your roof rack, obviously just give them a quick twist. Of Rattle or shake, whatever you want, just to make sure they're nice and tight.
To each yes, to each like a tiger. Yes. Also, if you're precious like me, maybe you want to find any stone chips and quickly hit them before they become rust. Or if you're not like me, you can point out all the scratches and stone chips and just laugh. Laugh about it. Yeah. yeah. And then go do some more. Yeah. If you're like me, you can point out all the scratches and stone chips and then cry and then pay for a respray. The final part, we've popped the bonnet and we're checking everything under here. So we're talking battery. We're going to check the tension of the battery clamp. We're going to check the terminals are nice and tight. Doing that for the cranking battery and the auxiliary battery. We're going to go through and check all the fluids. Washer fluid there, power steering fluid, brake fluid, clutch fluid, engine fluid, aka oil. Like every fluid, check it. If you've got an automatic transmission, pull up the dip stick, check that. Also your hoses, you want to look for any weeping, give them a bit of a squeeze. Check your fan belts for tension. Oh, that is not tense. I think I might have found a bit of a problem for your um for your power issues, Taylor. Yeah. Your um alternator belt's very loose. Now be very careful with this. Do not get any of that brake fluid on your paint. If you get it on your hands, go wash it off straight away, wipe it on a rag, or the person behind the camera, either one. Yes. Bring it. Um, Mine looks all right. It generally looks a should look clear, shouldn't it? Pretty yeah, transparent. Pretty transparent. Mine's colored. got a little bit of a green tinge to it. That's the dipstick for the oil. Give it a wipe. Get everything off that. Get it nice and clean. And stick it back. Get it straight back in the hole. And pull it back out again. And you hold it on the angle. And that shows you how much oil we got. Oh yeah, how does it look? It looks like it's full to me. Look at that. Full to the top. Full to the top and she's green. Okay. That's what you want. Those boxes are checked. This is my air filter from when I bought the car. And I own it, I've owned the car for about eight months now. Never changed it. Blown it out once or twice with the compressed air. And it's pretty damn chockers. I did the whole hole and track with it. You can almost see how clogged up it is in there. If I stick my nail in there, it'll come out and... Oh yeah. If I drop this on the ground... Hey. And that's not even half of it. Yeah. Moral of the story, we check the air filter, replace it if needed, at least give it a blowout with a compressor while we're under yeah. here. And if anyone's watching from Durian, cheers to Durian Tyon Auto that had one in stock. Otherwise I would have been buggered. The last thing you want to do when you get around to this side of the vehicle is drain your fuel filter, which is this bastard here. Just a little tap down the bottom, drain it out, have a cup underneath, there's a little hose that, that comes out the bottom. Have a little clear cup or something underneath so you can catch what comes out. It looks particularly bad, sandy, dirty, murky, watery. I think it's time for a new filter. Well damn, looks like I forgot to film a closing statement for this video. So I'll just tell you about it over the top of some footage of this GQ being awesome. So there's how you do a post trip inspection on your vehicle. If you have any other post trip inspection points to share, do let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Backyard Mechanic.